Welcome to the UIAAA Connection Podcast. Hometown Ticketing is proud to be the exclusive sponsor of the UIAAA Connection Podcast and to provide schools nationwide with the best options for digital ticketing for their events. Visit their website at hometownticketing.com to learn how they can make digital ticketing possible and simple at your school. Thank you to Hometown Ticketing for their exclusive sponsorship of the UIAAA Connection Podcast. Welcome back to another edition of the UIAAA Connection. I'm your host, Mark Hutch Hunter. Today, our guest is Brian Argyle, Certified Athletic Administrator at Payson High School. Welcome to the broadcast, Brian. Thank you. Glad to be here today. This is a, a fun thing that you've done, Hutch, and I've appreciated watching some of the others that uh, have been on. Well, thank you for the kind words. Let's let's begin by having you share with our audience here in Utah and across the nation where you grew up, your first job, college, those types of things. Okay. Well, I grew up in Spanish Fork, Utah. Uh, I was uh, there most of my life where I was able to... Uh, just be a kid. I, I, as I was reflecting back on this uh, moment, I reflected back to the eighties and how awesome it was to grow up there. Uh, I, I enjoyed sports. I enjoyed uh, my family and enjoyed those times where, where you could just be a kid, you know, you could, you could mm-hmm. go out and, and just, you know, base, baseball lasted for about, uh, five, six weeks, and then you were fishing or, or you were doing something throughout the summer that you wanted to do camping and so forth. And then you would go into football and then football was, or sorry, basketball, then you would go into football and, you know, or, or vice versa, but you always had something that you were going to do, but they didn't take a long time. They were just, and you always had time for something else. And I think today's kids are kind of missing out on that. They, they feel like they need to be doing a sport all the time. And oftentimes it's one sport and not more than one. And I, I feel bad for them. And I feel bad because I've changed my ways too. And you know, I grew up camping and, and different things. And I don't think my kids, we've never camped that much. Our camp was in the, hmm. in a hotel, you know, going to play baseball in different all over the United States. And so sure. it, it's been fun though. And, and, and rewarding in, in a lot of ways. Um, after high school, I, I played I played uh, basketball, baseball, and football in high school. Uh, my junior year, I ended up getting cut in basketball, so I played baseball and football, where I felt like I excelled in those sports. Uh, I had an opportunity afterwards to go to Snow College and play baseball for uh, Steve Gardner, and uh, just. Uh, enjoyed that thoroughly, uh, left on my mission, an LDS mission for two years and came back and played for Steve Gardner at Utah Valley Community College at that time, UVCC, Mm -hmm. uh, thoroughly loved baseball and loved what that brought to me. Uh, you know, I, I had a really good year that year, had other opportunities to move on, but at that time, my wife, who is now my wife, I should say, was also my girlfriend in high school and and was there after my mission and we decided to get married and she got herself into a dietetics program at Utah State so I felt like she worked every bit as hard at that than I did for baseball and so I I quit and I went to Utah or to Utah State and got uh, you know in, in my finished my degree in exercise science uh, wasn't going into teaching at that time. I was actually going to do some health promotion stuff and different things and came home for the summer. We moved back down to Spanish Fork for a summer and I just felt like I need, I wanted to be a coach and teach. And so I went to BYU, finished my uh, teaching certificate and uh, a year later got a job in Spanish Fork Middle School with Steve Dudley and who was just a, just retired as an uh, athletic director as well um, after mm-hmm. his and as a principal so anyway he uh, or I I uh, started teaching I've taught for 25 years I coached for 20 years of those 25 years uh, 
at Spanish Fork High School, I was a football coach, uh, basketball coach, and a baseball coach for uh, for those times. Not the, not all 20 years football, all 20 years. The rest of them, not not all. Um, but wow, probably look back and think some of the my favorite times in life was was coaching. Uh, just loved it, loved the kids, loved the people I coached with, and just. What a journey it's been. It's been fun. And so anyway, I decided I wanted to try administration, got my administration license and went into administration and was a TSA for six years. No, not quite that long, but in about five years. But my last stint as a TSA, they also made me an athletic director at Payson here. And uh, I found out very quickly that I didn't want to be an administrator. <laughs> I wanted to go into athlete, be an athletic director and, or an athletic administrator. Uh, so, I mean, they all, they go along the same lines, but you're doing a, a little bit different things and working with the kids that you want to be working with. And so I, I, I've enjoyed that part of it. Um, my family is growing. I have, uh, obviously my wife and we have four children. My oldest is 27 and my youngest is a junior in high school right now. And, uh, there's four, three boys and one girl. And we also have two, I'm a grandpa now, which is the greatest thing I'll ever call myself. I think I, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed that and look forward to having many more. Uh, we have two right now and just, it's just so fun. So, yeah, that's that's a little bit about me and where I'm from. Um, so speaking of your children now, if memory serves me right now, you realize that I'm old. But one of your <laughs> one of your children was a recipient of the UI AAA scholarship here two or three years ago. Is that right? Or yes, maybe? that that is my daughter Emma. Emma received that, uh, uh, and you know, at that time it was kind of funny. I was just getting started, and and I kind of didn't tell her about it. I, you know, because I was a pace and she's at Spanish fork and sure. And, and she, you know, and, and at that time it was kind of, you had to be a three sport athlete. You had to do, you know, and she was only a two sport athlete, but she told me she had written a written thing and put in for that scholarship and it had nothing to do with me. I didn't tell her anything about it. And the next thing I know, she, she won that uh, scholarship and, uh, I was so proud of her because uh, she really has accomplished a lot of things in her life. And right now she's in Rome, Italy on a mission herself. And so we're actually going back to, to get her in December. So I get to go back to Rome. Oh. So. <laughs> Excellent. Share with yeah. our audience some of the mentors you had growing up. I, I know probably your parents, but maybe with them along yeah. some of the other people that had a great influence in your life. Uh, I've had so many wonderful mentors in my life. Uh, when you're in sports, as long as I've been in, you have a lot of good mentors. Um, you know, some of the ones that I put down uh, were when I first got started, uh, a man named Dave Travort, who was a big time, he, he, he was a good athlete himself, but he, as I started teaching, he took over me, or I, he was my mentor. And boy, just got me going and helping me in school as a teacher. And because before, you know, right now in Nebo School District, athletic directors still teach. And I, I do believe that teaching is a wonderful field. Um, and you can be a great mentor to many, many kids. And so I, I try to do that uh, when I do teach. Um, the other uh, just kind of See, and I wrote some notes here to, for myself to remember. Um, you know, it's kind of funny. As I played at Spanish Fork High School, I started, my ninth grade basketball coach was Dave Boyack. I never really thought about this until I started thinking, you know, uh. going over this. But Dave Boyack's a, a, an athletic administrator. My high school baseball coach was uh, Tim Brethwaite, who was the athletic administrator. My mm -hmm. high school football coach was Doug Snell, who was wow. an athletic administrator. <laughs> so, 
as I look up, look back and I see those three. Uh, and then also I started coaching when I started coaching it. The, the person who hired me to coach football was Everett Kelly Polo. Wow. And, and so I've got four awesome athletic administrator mentors that have just really, I've watched them. I've seen each one of them become, you know, just great people what they did and how they treated the students at high in high school and how they how they did their jobs and and so forth and so it's always been something that i I've, I've always looked up to and obviously uh, you know coaches we can look at uh, um oh steve gardner probably one of my favorite coaches i've ever had he just was very positive with me and helped me uh like i said doug snell uh many, many other coaches, Jim Nelson, um, and so forth. So I've had many men mentors in my life, but you're right. My parents were, were right up there as well. Well, that's you, three of those four athletic administrators you mentioned were former presidents of the U.S. Past AAA, presidents. Or, or will yeah. be every, next or year. Or will and be. Then of, <laughs> and then, of course, uh, Doug Snell was served on the uh, athletic director executive committee for years and years. So that's yeah. That's some impressive lineage that you have there. Now, yeah. Let, let me ask yeah. you this. What's the uh, the job of athletic director today? And how has that changed just in the, the time since you first started? You know, when I was at junior high, I, I was the athletic director of the junior high. And really, and I'm not trying to put down junior high athletic directors because in Nebo School District, it wasn't much of a job. It was put the put the in, year end schedule together or the schedule together and then just make sure it's it was followed the principals in junior high really wanted their thumb on things and so you know there wasn't a whole lot of things that we could do yeah i got to the high i got to the high school athletic director and my eyes were bright uh, wide open i was like wow there's a lot more to this than there ever than i ever thought there was but since I started six years ago, I, I, it's just amazing what has changed. I, you know, register my athlete has come on board. Register my coach is now on on board. Um, you have uh, just so many more sports that you're that you're over. I mean, you know, you. It used to be that uh, springtime was like, oh, we can relax. But all of a sudden now we have lacrosse and, you know, boys and girls lacrosse. We have I mean, there's just so many sports now that we're involved in, you know, and I'm also over, uh, you know, the the band, the orchestra, the the, the drama and so forth. And I take care of uh, here in Nebo School District. I take care of all the payments of all those coaches and and those that help and. And, uh, you know, it just doesn't seem like there's a downtime very, uh, very often. And I still teach half, usually half a day. And so, yeah, that's a busy schedule. It's a busy schedule, but you know, Mark, I love busy. I, I love, I love what I do and I love being part of it. And so uh, I won't, I'm not going to go out <laughs> because it's busy. Mm. What's, what's one thing you wish you had known when you began your career that you know now that you didn't know when you began? <laughs> you know, that, that was a good question. I think, I, I think what I come up with is how rewarding this job is. I wished I would have known how rewarding. I, I mean, I, like I say, you, you just name, I just named three guys that were my coaches as well as athletic directors. And, I never really appreciated what they did because they did it so well, you didn't even realize what was going on. Um, and now I, 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 when I, when we go to the golf tournament in St. George, uh, Tim Breathway and, and Doug Snell are golfing with me, you know, and we talk and I tell them all the time, man, I can't tell you how rewarding this, this job is. And, and, and they both just smile and they know how rewarding it is. And so it's, I wished I would have known that a little sooner. Maybe I would have jumped into the high school a little sooner and, and got into this a, a little, a little sooner. What's your biggest failure or disappointment and what did you learn from it? 
You know, it's funny. I, I'll probably call it a, a failure. Uh, I don't like to see take it as a failure maybe it was more of a blessing um got moved over to pace in high school didn't get a job that i had applied for uh for assistant principal and and felt like i was deserving of it and felt like that uh, i had put my time in for that and didn't receive it and i it it was a tough tough time for me i actually went in I, you know i've never ever in my life experienced depression and I think I went into a little bit of depression. And as I came over to Payson and I was still a TSA and then jumped into the athletic part, uh, director part of it, I started going home and feeling better about things. And I'd tell my wife, you know, I don't think I want to go pursue administration anymore. I think I want to go into athlete, be an athletic director. And, and so what might have been, my, a failure at one time ended up being a blessing for me, you know, and I know I probably will never make as much money as, as an administrator or whatever, but that doesn't matter. I want it to me, life is about being happy and about being, making yourself feel like you're needed and what, that you're wanted and, and so forth. And I, that's what I felt and that's what I feel now. And so to me, it wasn't a failure. It was a, a success for me. Very well said. Speak to our audience for a moment about the importance of certification and your journey to become a CAA, because well, you and I obviously know how important it is, but trying to get yeah. everybody or all the ADs in Utah certified is, is a tall task. So talk about that. You know, and that it is a tall task because I think oftentimes I don't, I don't know why. I mean, I've gotten into athletic director and I just want to stay I'm surprised athletic directors and athletic administrators are moving so fast and move you know it's almost like they find out that what this job really is and it's so busy they just jump right back out or go do go somewhere else or they're they're doing it like I was an administrator and then they're going in administration um I'm going to be honest with you at first I, I fought the CAA thing. I, I really did because I just didn't feel like we were getting the backing at Neva school district or, or so forth that, that, you know, we were always going to be just this athletic director and no one was going to listen to us or, you know, we always had to just do what the principal said or so forth. Sure. And so, and so I fought it and I fought it. And then I started to, talking to some of those people that I've already mentioned and, and, also being on ADAC committee and seeing some like yourself and and Mike Hunter and and just all these people that are jumping in with their two feet and and just loving it, I started thinking, wow, I you know what, I need to give this more of a thought. And so at that time, I decided, you know what, I I need to do this. I want to do it. It's more for me now. I'm not having those. Uh, the, you know, I'm not doing it. I'm not holding off of it because of someone else. I'm doing it for me. And when I did that, it, it was, it, it was just very comforting for me. It was something that, you know, yep, yeah, let's go do it. I, I, I got there. It was, it was a, a wonderful road and I've learned a lot through that. And so becoming a CAA uh, and, and I'm right now working on the CMM, CMAA, and should probably within, you know, I got a few classes I need to take, but I, I, that's, I want to do that. That's something I look forward to. And I want to do it because it's helping me become a better athletic director. And so I, you know, so I would just say to, to those of you that aren't wanting to CAA, you know, it's, it, it really is a rewarding thing. It re really is something that you can look back and say, you know what, now I, I know why I did it. And, and I am certified because I'm telling you, I, if, if you jump in and you go to the national conferences and you go to this, the conferences in, in St. George, you will learn so much. I've, I've seen principals go to these conferences and say, these are better conferences than any administrative conference I've ever been to. They're well run, 
they're they they're amazing to go to and and just learn with other athletic administrators thank you for the shout out and i i might yeah. add that now in nebo district i think i'm thinking of all the i think four of the five high schools have caa or better in their high schools yeah so yeah. to be commended there yeah. share with our audience for a moment uh your time on the the ui AAA athletic director executive committee and what's that like and and to others that uh maybe give them a little push so uh, when that rotation comes around they get a chance to participate in that yeah um you know i've i've been on adac committee for six years that well this is my fifth oh, this is my third stint on uh, adac and i don't want to be off of adac it's it's really a fun thing but and i got lucky with this new region uh, we have several of our athletic administrators i mean we have uh Bill Seibert, who is an athletic administrator. We have Trevor Wilson, uh, Katham Beer, who is now our, our president. Um, and so, and then there's other up and coming uh, that are just wonderful athletic directors. And so probably won't get to do this much longer because there's just so many want, you know, that, and to tell you the truth, I probably should step down and let somebody else get that opportunity because it really is something that you it opens your eyes to how the state runs the its its programs um a lot of us don't think about that we don't think about how how do we vote on as as most athletic directors right now know we're voting on a shot clock in sure. in basketball uh well that first had to pay it pass adac committee and we we talked about it we thought about it and we felt like yeah this is something that probably should be voted on um so there's there's you know and then it goes to us and it goes to the ec and i didn't know i wouldn't i couldn't have told you those things if i wasn't on adac and how all that works and so it, and and then it also gives you a voice uh you're able to voice your concerns or voice some some other opportunities that maybe you think something might work a little better or, or so forth. And I think that's where you have to go back and talk to your athletic directors in your own region. So you can take that to the ADAC committee if needed. And so just been a, a really fun opportunity for, for me. Uh, and I know I, I'm probably going to ask your, answer your question right now, but one thing that I've, been really excited about is I've been able to be over the golf committee uh, over the last two years. And what a, what, a, <laughs> that's just fun. Uh, we, we get together as athletic directors and, and administrators and whoever wants to golf. And, uh, but it's, it's there to make money for our scholarship winners. And man, if I could give a shout out to anybody that's listening, that uh, is an athletic director, we need sponsorships. That's where we make our money. If, if you could, we, we'd love you to, to sponsor a hole for us um, at our next uh, tournament, which will be in April um, in, in St. George. Uh, if we could get one, two, three sponsors per hole, we could put money into 10 or more student athletes that have really earned that. And so hopefully we can, we can continue to work on that and make it better. And I, I've told uh, Dave Boyack, who I work with um, on that, that we, we really need to, to just jump into this and, and really get a lot more money. It, this could be our sole money maker for all of it. Really could. Well said. So. I'm glad you brought that up. You call it the golf committee. I think it's officially called the special events committee because it also it includes, is. It is. Well, it includes uh, and talk for this about a moment because you're familiar with this with our UI AAA cross country meet. Cross also, country. All, all the money we make off that also goes to our scholarship. So talk about how that's. Well, awesome. and you know what? And you had a chance to come down this year. Uh, you want to see athletics in its pr prime. You come watch one of our that that uh, cross country meet. It is absolutely 
an eye-opening event. You have thousands of kids, thousands, and they're, you know, it's just, I don't know how many, but it just looks like it goes forever. And, and what an opportunity is for those kids to just come. It, it's, you know, I've never really been part of track or con- cross country and, and to watch the dedication those kids have and what they put in and so forth. It, it's fun. It's fun to watch and, and see them. And you know what? There's not many sports where you're seeing other schools just rooting on everybody else. And that's what's fun about it. And so but yeah, it's it's another one of those special events that we're raising money for scholarships. And I think we've probably did three or four thousand this year in in that cross country meet. And and, you know, with between it and the golf, we're subsidizing a lot of scholarships for kids. Thank you for sharing that. What's one common myth, Brian, that (laughs) about being an athletic director that you'd like to debunk? People out there. (laughs) people out there think that's not really true you know number one that the job's easy (laughs) it's it's not i mean it's fun it's enjoyable it's what it's why we're coaches probably in the past and want to do something like this because we want to see kids succeed but it's not just easy it's it's tough and you have a lot of work to do and you're dealing with a lot of parents and i was just on, on my phone today, you know, talk, talking to a coach about how, uh, how hard it's been this year and, and so forth and trying to consult with her and help her. And I've had angry parents in my office and I had, you know, lots of different things that have gone on this year. Um, and so you're getting both sides of athletics and administration. And, and so it's not easy. The other one I would probably say is that, Oh, what all they do is all they do is put the teams together and go do it. You know that there's so much more responsibility to an athletic administrator. And and not only that, then we're always trying to do better. We're always trying to. That's why I like the CAA. And that's why I'm a big proponent of the CMAA is because I want to try and make myself better. And so right now we're we're reading, uh, you know, my whole all my coaches are reading. Um a book together um and we've done that for two years now we read and we go in and we meet twice a year we talk about the things that we're reading and what we can learn and i really think it's helped our our coaches a lot because they can hear from other coaches of, of what they do and and so forth so so main thing I would debunk is that it's not just easy. It's, it's there, it, you know, I, I don't want it easy. I want it to ha- challenge me. And the other one would be that, uh, that there's more responsibilities than people think. Maybe that's why there's so much turnover. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> Let me ask you this. What's the favorite part of your job? I, you know what? It's the athletes. It's the kids by far. And, it, and if if you don't say that, I think you're in the wrong business. Um, I love watching the kids succeed. And even if they don't succeed, winning and losing to me is not everything by all means anymore. Uh, when I was a coach, it was always winning, win, win, win. And so I have to remember that when I'm talking to my coaches. But uh, myself, when I, when I have kids with a big smile on their face and they're enjoying what they're doing. That to me is everything that, that to me is saying, okay, high school athletics is, is moving forward still. I think when we stop smiling and it's all about winning, we're in trouble. So. Great answer. Let's finish up with a couple of questions. The first being, okay. if you could have two suggestions for a brand new athletic administrator, that they absolutely would need to have in order to become successful, what would those two suggestions be? Well, number one would be to look through your region. It doesn't even need to be your region, but first of all, start maybe in your region and find someone who has done it for a while and find a mentor. Uh, Dave Boyack helped me out so much. It took me 
you know, just grabbed me and said, let's go do it. And I'm going to teach you how. And he, he's really helped me as a mentor to become a better athletic director. I, um, I'm never I'm not going to be as good as him, but I'm going to try and, and just keep on working hard. Um, the other one would be to just jump in with both feet. You can't, you can't just put one foot in and, and hope that you can do it. You have to just jump in with both feet. And uh, I would then say the things that I've already talked about, take classes, uh, go, you know, this last meeting that the UHSA had, I took my assistant uh, athletic director with me and I said, yeah, it's time. We need to start pushing you. You know, I, I don't know how many years I have left, but, uh, you know, I want to teach someone else. So maybe he could either be and then take my place or move on to another school someday because he likes it so much. And so I said, it's time to start taking classes. Let's get you to the UI AAA conference in St. George. Uh, you know, and that's what I would say to the new ones. You've got to get to those conferences. You've got to take some classes. And, you know, that the opportunity comes where you teach classes. Um, I've taught a few classes at the, at the conference and, uh, love doing so this, you know, would like to do more. So it's, that's fun. Thank you for that. What question should I have asked you that I failed to ask? <laughs> I thought about that one and I couldn't really think of any, <laughs> I think we've, we've covered quite a bit, but, uh, I guess, I guess just I would just like everybody to know I do I do this because I love it. This this brings me to work every day with being happy, being ready to to help someone else and to help uh, athletes and coaches and try to make our school a better place through through those things. Our athletes uh and, and not only athletes, but anybody that we cover through the UHSA band drama. I mean, I wish I could get every kid. I wish we had to make them do something when they entered high school. I wish they had to do something that the UHSA offers them because those kids would become better people throughout their life. And so that's why I do this. I, I want to make better people, better kids for, you know, for adult to become adults. Thank you for sharing that. That wraps it up for this edition of the UI AAA Connection. Once again, our guest has been Brian Argyle, Certified Athletic Administrator, Director of Athletics at Payson High School. Thanks for being on the broadcast, Brian. Thank you. Appreciate it. For our listeners, we hope you tune in next week for another edition of the UI AAA Connection. <laughs>